two things really stress me out. Uh, one is um, trying to get up the nerve to ask someone out on a date, and the other one is germs. <laughs> Asking someone out because, you know, I don't think I'm very good at it, and I get the timing all wrong, and, and everything's got to be perfect or else I'm not going to do it. And, and germs, germs are fucking scary. I mean, germs cause disease, and uh, I should mention, I'm anti-disease. So, uh, oh, and I have obsessive compulsive disorder, like full-blown, stamped and approved, diagnosed, like severe OCD with a strong, you know, dose of, of germophobia. And some of my friends think that my, my preoccupation with germs is excessive. Here's why they're wrong. When I'm walking through New York and I look down, I notice that the the sidewalks and the subway platforms are, are covered with a potpourri of, of, of contaminated material. There's like wadded up tissues and loogies and urine and vomit and feces and blood and used condoms, hypodermic needles. I can go on. The, the point is there's lots of bad stuff out there and I'm pretty good at avoiding it. Like if I see something slightly suspicious, I will steer clear. If you see me walking through Manhattan, it looks like I'm playing a giant game of hopscotch. I, I, I am good at avoiding these landmines, but not everyone else's. You know, a lot of people are oblivious and they'll just walk straight through this shit and they'll get the nasty stuff on the bottom of their shoes and they'll track it through the rest of the city until every walking surface in the entire metropolis is covered with a thin layer of disease. It's just science. So, you know, I, and it's, I'm not so much worried about getting a disease myself. My problem is I have this huge fear of passing a disease to someone. Like I'll get a, a germ on my hand and shake their hand and they'll maybe have a compromised immune system and get sick and die and I'll be saddled with guilt for the rest of my life. So, so and oh, I should mention I'm anti-killing. <laughs> so I, at, at one point I noticed my um, compulsions were getting out of control. I was washing my hands hundreds of times a day. They were getting bloody and raw and chapped, all so that I wouldn't spread disease to the rest of the world. You're welcome. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, but I noticed that other people around me weren't washing their hands hundreds of times a day and I realized my behavior had gotten out of, out of control. So I knew I needed to do something about it. So I started researching OCD and I found there's just two ways to treat OCD. One's medication, one's behavioral therapy. And behavioral therapy is very straightforward but hard to do. It basically involves immersing yourself in your fears and embracing the anxiety causing situations that cause you to go into rituals. So I thought, well, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna find the biggest, most badass behavioral therapy program there is. And I found this one in Philadelphia. It was this behavioral therapy boot camp. It's like a five week program, intensive, every day of the week. So I packed my bags, I moved to Philadelphia, I rented an apartment, and I signed up. So I'm, I'm there in the clinic the first day filling out the paperwork, and there's this, this girl also filling paperwork out right in front of me, and she's beautiful. She has this long strawberry blonde hair and sparkling blue eyes, and, and, and we start talking, and, and she's cool and funky and weird, and I'm just totally smitten. And what are the odds that there's this girl here that, that, that I'm totally into that has the same fucked up disorder that's starting the program on the same day? I mean, if there's ever a time I should get the balls to ask somebody out, this is it. Neither of us know anyone in the city. So, I think it's, maybe she'll think it's inappropriate. I figure we got five weeks. I'll, I'll ask her next week. So, she, Heidi has, her name's Heidi. She has different problems than I do. She has a fear of death. Anything to do with the word death, Halloween, cemeteries, triggers all kinds of rituals. So, uh, we have very different programs, different therapists. My therapist is this guy, Dr. Kozak. He gets straight to work. He says, Steve, what are you scared of? I said, well, the floor for starters. And he said, why the floor? And I proceeded to explain to Dr. Kozak that there's a thin layer of urine, feces, <laughs> blood, condoms. And so he said, okay, while you're here, we're gonna touch you know, urine, feces, blood, <laughs> and condoms. And I'm the crazy guy. <laughs> so I said, look, I'll be happy if I can touch the floor by the time I get out of here. So we went straight to work, went out in the streets of Philadelphia, started touching sidewalks, touching garbage, 
And by the end of the week, I'd really progressed. I was picking up garbage, put it in my pockets. We're going to the park, I'm touching dog shit. You know, and, and one of the other things was, he said, there's no wash, you're not allowed to wash your hands for the entire five weeks you're here. Matter of fact, you're not allowed to touch water. You can have one five minute shower every four days and that's it. So we're touching dog shit and garbage. And because my big fear is spreading germs to other people, then we would go to this market and I'd handle all the fruit that I knew other people would be buying. So, you know, by the end of the week, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I'm, it's working. I'm, I'm feeling, you know, empowered. And I'm thinking, I'm going to go back to the clinic and I'm going to ask Heidi out because I'm confident. And I get back to the clinic and Heidi's not doing so well. She's like jittery and shaking. And they had taken her to a cemetery and had her like lie down on a freshly dug grave plot. And I, so I was like, you know, th this isn't a good time to ask her out. I, 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 well, I'll wait till next week. So the next week w rolls around. Dr. Kozak and I are kicking ass. I'm going into public restrooms. I'm grabbing on the toilet seats. I'm <laughs> putting my hand in the toilet water. We're, we're on our way to the market, and we pass by this porno store. And Dr. Kozak's like, let's go into the porno store. The, okay. And, and if you haven't been in there, they have these, like, video booths where sometimes gentlemen go when they're in need of release. I guess is the best way to put it. And, and, and you go in the booth and, and it's dark and there's a video screen and there's a place you put quarters in and a channel changer and the idea is you find the channel you like and you do your business. So, so I'm in the booth and Dr. Kozak's on the other side of the wall and he's like, make sure you touch the screen and touch the knob and put your finger in the coin return and make sure to touch the wall. And it's dimly lit, but on this black painted wall I can see white streaks. I'm sorry, I know. And, and he's like, touch the floor, and, and I can't see the floor at all because it's pitch black, so I'm touching the floor. And I, I come out and say, let's go to the market. And, and we go to the market, and I'm, I'm handling the fruit, and he's like, why, why don't you buy yourself an apple? And I'm like, okay, do, do you want one? And he said, not after you touched it. And I'm <laughs> like, all right, funny guy. So, but, but now I'm feeling like I've done it all. I am like Superman. I am, I am impervious. I am so confident. I am going to go back. I'm going to ask Heidi out. And, and it doesn't matter what kind of mood she's in. I got enough feel good for the two of us. So I, I go back to the clinic, and I don't see Heidi. And I ask the receptionist, have you, have you seen Heidi? And, and she said, no, I'm afraid uh, she wasn't handling this well, and she left early. She went back to Canada. I, I missed my chance. This could have been my, my soulmate. So if, if I could impart one piece of advice tonight, it's... For God's sake, wash your fruit before you eat it. <laughs> <laughs>